screen porch. It was all knitted into an existing structure. Nothing was demolished <clears throat> except the, the entire back wall of the house, which you'll see. Um, this is a stone pattern, all done from scratch, all cut in a shop, and then field installed. These are the base pieces that support the mahogany screen panels, the water basins. And then the back wall of the building, which has a, a piece of the dining room which projects out of the building, uh, was a tiny little salt box of a house, very dark. So the back wall was transformed structurally <clears throat> and we had a phalanx of doors that could open up uh, and the entire house actually could ventilate itself in spring and fall. And you can see some of the detailing um, uh, here in the, in the water spouts, the water removal, uh, the structure for the uh, mahogany post now carrying the house and then the water troughs uh, which drop kind of amazingly into those basins. There are brass beads between each of these and then copper uh, caps over the top of all the exterior walls. We also did some of the interior. There was a, a suite of rooms uh, upstairs, uh, dressing rooms and cabinet work, which we did for light fixtures, uh, which we did for the owner. Um, as was mentioned earlier, we did uh, the same uh, uh, curatorial activity for the Canadian Center with Phyllis Lambert and, Dave, and uh, 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 Mildred Friedman, who was the uh, guest curator uh, for the show of Carlos Scarpa. In this case, um, uh, we actually built uh, a set of models of, of uh, some of Scarpa's projects. Um, uh, great controversy about some of the models we chose uh, because we felt they held keys. People felt were not, uh, some of the curators felt were not that significant. There was uh, one for a house that Scarpa had done. It was the only freestanding building in his career, um, which we felt was very important, um, a house in Udine. <clears throat> and, uh, and as well, it was a huge fight over the bank in Verona. Uh, in any event, we, we prevailed. The show was organized in a very interesting way. Um, we had decided that the only thing that would be on the wall was Scarpa's drawings. The drawings were an astonishing uh, set of drawings. Um, so they're in frames that we designed and organized uh, in the exhibit of the work. There was uh, commissioned a set of photographs by Guido Guidi, well-known Italian photographer. And those are in these steel easels, uh, which sit on the floor. Uh, he wanted you to not look at the drawings as you looked at the photographs. So uh, we uh, had them at a height and at a tilt enough so that you had to actually look down to look at them. And then there were the uh, models, uh, which were made here. And you can see, and then there was actually one of Scarpa's own easels as part of the show. This is a model of the um, uh, Castelvecchio in Verona. And here you can see the, uh, the freestanding house, uh, which also, uh, again, was so referenced by Frank Lloyd Wright and held so many of the keys to his later work, especially the Brion Cemetery, that we felt very strongly that that uh, project should be included. It was also on this extraordinary site. Uh, uh, I think it was 30 feet wide and about 200 feet long. So it was, it's a very, it was a very interesting site plan the way it was uh, set in the community. Um, we also did an array of other uh, uh, renovations, uh, these in stages. This was a, uh, a piece that came up into a, uh, into a penthouse, which we're uh, about to do the roof piece to. Uh, this was a, was a modernization of an old two-bedroom apartment below. <clears throat> um, and it was really weaving the three pieces together. These are just some of the study drawings of the stair element that winds through the three floors of the construction, some of the woodwork, which really started to now explore the, uh, the uh, two, three, and four levels of, uh, of plywood. Um, lighting built in as part of it, uh, much more elaborate screw assemblies. And then finally, the roof <clears throat> piece, which is to be done uh, hopefully next year, uh, which is a uh, master bedroom and uh, children's bedroom suite on top. What you were looking at was a little two bedroom, uh, a little one bedroom apartment down here that was turned into three bedrooms. They have this half of the roof <clears throat> and this is a tiny little roof monitor and uh, had gotten permission to build up onto the top of this roof. This is all done in copper, will be done in copper. 
Um, we've also done glassware. <clears throat> this for, um, uh, for the Murano Glass Company uh, in Italy. This was a, an exhibit. I uh, was looking at, uh, uh, hand, this is hand-blown glass. These are chips of amethyst uh, embedded in here. This was a spillway cup. We did actually, a, I think, 20 or so different kinds of glassware. They decided on this wine goblet. But you can see it here in elevation and here uh, close up. And again, the, the tactility of it was very important, the texture uh, of these precious pieces of stone as they're uh, emerging out of the glass. Um, we, I'm going to run through a, a handful of quick projects uh, and as we're finishing up. This is a, a house which we've been working on for a very long time. It's an enormous house uh, out in the landscape. Started from an array of, drawing, of, of sketches and studies about looking at ways to uh, build in an extremely cold weather climate. This is upstate New York. Um, this is a, a, a house that has grown dramatically uh, from a little cottage at one end to now being uh, a very large three-bedroom house of about 8,000 square feet, including a very large indoor swimming pool complex. You can see the organization of um, uh, this is a, a room that looks out over a tremendous landscape. There's a reception room as you come in with a copper drum that comes through, a little guest room, uh, a family a master bedroom, kids' rooms, outdoor courtyard dining, and then the pool at the end. Um, I was also looking at this uh, object as a, as a wooden form floated in the landscape on a stone plinth. Um, again, we were looking at houses that could close down that could get rid of snow. Uh, all this uh, roof pitching was a way of uh, obviously getting snow removal off the building. There's a site plan. Uh, studies through the great the master uh, living room uh, cut into the uh, site, again, all in elaborate woodwork. <clears throat> the master bedroom cut here, you can see an elevation. the drum, and you can see the entire wooden building taken off. Uh, what you're left is this stone plinth <clears throat> across the site. The entry hall. Uh, these are some computer-generated images through the uh, section through the swimming pool. And we were also looking at the uh, at, uh, colored plaster, wood inlays. Uh, for a way of achieving uh, material, a decorative material uh, uh, texture to the space, as well as the copper on the inside of the ceiling. Uh, another small apartment, uh, this, the joining of two studios <coughs> into a uh, uh, little uh, apartment, uh, again, in Chelsea in New York. Um, this with a very large curved wall. Private rooms behind a public living space in front. Um, uh, you can see the furniture kind of projecting through the front wall of the, uh, of the form, uh, lighting all built in, furniture. And uh, we were looking at, uh, uh, we were working in GFRC. I'm going to show you a, a project which we uh, built using the material. This was a tower we were going to explore uh, large wall panels in uh, here, a view from there's a big uh, terrace uh, city park on one side with courtyards and uh, dining facilities in here from the athletic field. Uh, we did a, a study for a project in Florida for an arts complex. Uh, again, a, a site, uh, a 13-acre site. <clears throat> uh, we came in second. We're moving up. I hope at some point we'll come in first. But um, this was for three performing arts theaters, uh, spillways and waterways, uh, outdoor amphitheater, these copper-clad drums sitting out in the water for uh, restaurants and, um, and cafes. Uh, these were all done as sketches and studies. Uh, we did a small uh, computer model. These were large louvered aerated rooms sitting out in the lake which could be ventilated through naturally, um, which would give sun control and, and would also give ventilation. We had these two museums and then the performing arts theaters. We actually only used this to build a small computer model. Um, the last two projects I'm going to show you is uh, this uh, a little residential project because this was done at the same time as a community center which we've been working on for the city of New York. 
<clears throat> this was for a, f a financier on Park Avenue. Uh, it's a very tiny project.